This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. I've served up two scoops of impeachment so far, but it seems that the flavor is quite popular these days. The House has voted out two articles of impeachment against Donald Trump. So, let's have another scoop, shall we? As I said, the House voted out the proposed impeachment articles on the 18th of December after a long, long day of floor debate. The split was almost perfectly along party lines, as many expected given the political nature of this process and the almost complete lack of any attempts at bipartisanship on either side. Social media exploded when it learned the results. So, to address some of the things which I've seen on Twitter regarding impeachment, yes, Trump is the third president to be impeached. No, he hasn't been successfully impeached yet, and neither has any other president in the history of the United States. He remains in office and is still eligible for re-election in 2020. No, it's not likely that he will be successfully impeached. No, that's not because Mitch McConnell is obstructing justice. In order to convict during the Senate trial, the final vote must be to convict the president on at least one article by a two-thirds majority of senators present for the vote. The current composition of the Senate is 53 Republicans, 45 Democrats, and two independents who normally caucus with the Democrats. So in order to guarantee a conviction, 20 Republicans would have to vote against Trump. About 90% of all Republicans approve of Trump. So the best that can be expected by the Democrats at this time is that six senators would cross the aisle, leaving them short of the votes they need to convict the president by over a dozen. I suppose that if all 47 senators who caucus with the minority show up, and somehow only 23 Republican senators show up, that it's possible for them to vote to convict the president. It's not possible for the senators to vote to convict by voting present, though. They have to vote yes on convict. No, Trump is not eligible for a third term because he's been impeached. The House vote did not nullify his current term from the count. If that were true, then Bill Clinton would have run for a third term. So what does it mean then, and why did the House do it? Well, it means that the intended impeachment, which was first called for before Donald Trump was inaugurated, has finally happened just in time for the presidential primary season. It means that the majority of representatives believe, or at least voted, that the president has committed offenses worthy of removal from office. The allegations mentioned during the investigations and hearings were that Trump had engaged in abuse of power by asking members of a foreign government to investigate his chief rival for the presidency and then obstructed congressional oversight. The words quid pro quo were used rather often, as a matter of fact, connected with allegations repeatedly denied by both Trump's officials and the foreign government in question. Hmm. Nancy Pelosi stated that this move was made in sorrow, not in anger or malice. Hmm. Pelosi then declared that this wasn't politically motivated and then followed up by demanding that the Senate not turn this into a political process. Hmm. Oh, and Pelosi also said that this process was too important and had to be expedited, and then demanded that the Senate make certain guarantees before she would order the transmittal of the Articles of Impeachment to the Senate. Now that's a quid pro quo, in my opinion, but what do I know? As for why the House did it, look at the timing. The Articles passed by the House and, in fact, the entire timeline of impeachment. Certain members have been calling for impeachment for three full years now. Most Democratic members of Congress have been discussing the president's, quote, criminal misconduct, unquote, and launching endless investigations into him for all three years. Many people, including some whom I know personally, believe so strongly that the president is a racist, sexist, homophobe, xenophobe, Islamophobe, in short, a deplorable, since well before Hillary Clinton branded half of his supporters as deplorables. Many major media outlets have fed this line of pursuit for over three years. They've cast every story as if Trump's successes and failures alike are due to his deplorability. They've been at it for a long time, because Trump announced his re-election campaign before his inauguration, and they don't want eight years of Donald J. Trump. And that's it. It's about the 2020 election. It's always been about the 2020 election. 
Now, I've said before that Trump is rude, crude, crass, and bombastic. Does that make him an arrogant ass? Yep. Does it make him deplorable? Um, no. Just no. People, even the president, can be rude, crude, crass, and bombastic without becoming one of Hillary's deplorables. What's more, voters recognize that Trump is an arrogant ass, and many love him for it. They ignore his questionable relationship with the truth as just a normal aspect of being a politician. You know, the same sort of thing which caused the inclusion of one of my favorite quotes in the movie Good Morning Vietnam. Bullshit. I know Nixon personally. He lugs a trainload of shit behind him that could fertilize the Sinai. Why, I wouldn't buy an apple from the son of a bitch and I consider him a good, close, personal friend. George Orwell spoke of the same concept most aptly. Political language. And with variations, this is true of all political parties, from conservatives to anarchists, is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable, and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind. Politics, as people have stated for over a hundred years at least, is all lies, damned lies, and statistics. That's why there's a booming business in fact-checking. Now what I'm saying is just my opinion, and I'm not going to pretend that it's fact. But consider this. Are you personally looking for lies on both sides of this matter? How about bias? Partisanship? Ulterior motives? Corruption? Dirty money from shadowy donors? Yeah? On both sides? There might be a few out there who are, but for the most part, the answer is no, and you know it. There may be a fourth scoop of impeachment on this channel. Then again, maybe not. I'm finding that the flavor is just to hide the rottenness of the DC swamp.